Hello. Recording. Hi, Steve. Hey, Bill. Hi. Bill. I think you muted, Bill. You are muted, Bill, and very, okay. very hitchy okay. video. Has he frozen? Okay. Well, to come and go. My go. computer, I might have to call back. Uh, I'm going to have to do this by phone. My uh, Wi-Fi router now today, uh, that is the problem. It's the, it's the router itself. So why don't I just call back in, okay? Okay, okay. Unless you can, unless you can hear me now, is that working? We can, well, we can, hear, we can you. hear you for now. You, you still seem okay. a little. I'm doing in. this. Okay, I'm doing this with a hotspot now, so a phone hotspot. So. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to have much to say anyway. <laughs> right. Well, oh, we're... come on! We're expecting something. <laughs> We hopefully yeah, we'll under the get, weather, uh, so. one other person too. Yeah, um, right. I I didn't hear that anyone else couldn't come, so we should have Carol and Dan and hopefully Charlie too. Um, and obviously we need Gretchen, but we have some time. So, uh, can we talk about our national grid thing at the end? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep, I I brought some um I brought some of the like the original plans for the area. Oh, okay. So we can see like what they had proposed versus what's out there. Has all survived the storm? That was crazy. It's like a monsoon. Yeah, yeah the, it was interesting. There was a tree across the street from us that fell down and it split in half, fell across the road in two places. Fortunately, it missed all the wires except for the house on across the street. And even even though his line was laying on the ground, he still had power. Wow. <laughs> Yikes. Oh my gosh. So it's live wire on the ground. Yeah. That's but he doesn't have power. He doesn't have power now because they came and disconnected it. Hey, oh, I saw the street. Your street was closed off yeah. yesterday. And um, so the electrician came today and it, it ripped it off the side of the house. So they put the new connection up, but they haven't been here to connect it. So he's had power all during the storm and doesn't have it now. <laughs> no fun. But, but didn't want to walk out the front door. That was it was funny because even though there were trees down and the line was laying on the ground, there were people trying to drive through. Well, of course there were. It's it's there is convenience involved. Yes. Yeah, it looked like a uh, a telephone pole was on a serious angle on Hale Street too. I don't know if. If it got hit by a tree, if it just got blown over a little bit, but Hale Street was closed for a while too. Yeah, and Plum Island was, um, I mean, the water was really high during the high tide. They had a lot of like the overwash, went, the waves went right over the all of the new sand and the nourishment area. Oh. Yeah. How much sand is left? Flooded the whole thing. Well, all of the sand, I mean, I shouldn't say all of the sand. I don't know how much sand is left, but it didn't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily, at least not that you could see taking away a lot of sand. It was more just washing over the whole area because it was such so high yeah. um, and it was, the waves were so strong. So it was crashing over the top of the, over the shoreline and then washing all the way up to where the rocks are on Res Reservation Terrace. It was very shallow, but it was reaching all the way up there. Isn't really what we wanted to see. <laughs> all right, we'll start in a couple of minutes. Only uh, two attendees at this point. Yep. With Pioneer Field and all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Surprising. 
that okay? Yeah. Here's Daniel. Hey, Dan. Okay, and Carol's here. Good. Carol. All right, the interwebs say it is 6.45. Let's bring this meeting to order. This is the Newburyport Conservation Commission, December 19th, 2023 meeting uh, taking place on the Zoom platform. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, first item on the agenda are the meeting minutes from December 5th. Anybody got any comments, questions, changes? Yeah. One comment, if, no, if nobody else does. Okay. Um, down here, when we get to the order of conditions, um, this is just a technicality, but Gretchen, um, under order of conditions, it says Steve Moore moved to issue an order of conditions with special conditions, et cetera, et cetera, but it never identifies for which project. Not that it's not self-explanatory, but I feel like we should just reference 6 Julia Street down here. Yep, when I was putting it there, I said, don't forget to put the, the <laughs> thing on top, and then I forgot. Okay, perfect. I had, Thank you. I had, I had something to also, um, so let's see if I could, I can't make the minutes move. Hang on, Mom, let me see if I, I can. Have, where do you want me to go? Oh, thank you. Um, it was under, um, go go up further to, uh, let's see, wait a minute. Um you were talking about, oh, I know, go back down. I'm sorry, to the yep. Plum Island piece. Um, the beginning Plum Island up, up here. Yes, because it says yeah. um, the last sentence, the results of this report should be received in the spring, which the Section 111 would take years to complete. There's something. Oh, yeah. something yeah, I, I, I was going to mention that. Maybe it, it, while. It's supposed to, be, supposed to be while. Yeah, it's while. Okay, because it sounds like the it's the results of the report um, did have to be completed. I don't know, so it was just a little funky. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? I'll make, make a motion to admit, to approve the minutes as amended. Second. All right. Roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. Bill Mullen? Yes. And I wrote yes. All righty. Uh, speaking of Plum Island updates, uh, do we have any Plum Island updates? I do not have any new Plum Island updates, no. Okay. Has anybody been down there since the storm yesterday? It's, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, I did go down there actually during the storm yesterday at high tide. Um, I was actually a little worried I wasn't going to be able to get back off the island. The water was up pretty high, but it didn't ever cross the road, at least not that I could see. Um, but yeah, I was just telling these guys that the um, at Reservation Terrace, the water was at high tide, um, crusting over the nourishment area um, and washing all the way up to the rocks at Reservation Terrace. So it, that area is just, the elevations are just so low. There's still plenty of sand there. It's just a really low elevation. So when the tide gets up that high and you get a storm like that, it, it's gonna it's gonna reach pretty far in. So that was sort of interesting to see. It did, didn't come over the rocks, did it? Did not come over the rocks, no, no. Okay. Not that I could see. Surf is still very high today. So um, and it, there could very well have been erosion all day today and, and overnight tonight. 
Hmm. Interesting. Okay, maybe I'll go back out there tomorrow. <clears throat> Were you out there on your board, Dan? Uh, nope. Drove up by um, Hampton, and uh, there were some guys out. Mm. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, on to other things. Um, first item: uh, certificates, compliance, etc. Uh, Daniel Sweeney, one fifty two Northern Boulevard, request for determination. Okay. So here's 152 Northern Boulevard. I'm uh, moving Tom Hughes over to be a panelist. He's the representative for this project. So Tom, you can um, start whenever you're ready. Okay. And just um, want to, I may cut out because I'm actually running on a generator because a tree fell off and knocked my electric service off the house. So wow. um, if I cut out, I'll try to get back in on my cell phone. Um, all right, so Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting here on behalf of Dan Sweeney. Um, the project at 152 Northern Boulevard is um, it's the installation of a roof deck, rearranging some entryways, but it's primarily um, work renovating the inside of the of the structure and just kind of making it look better. Um, the uh, the site is heavily developed, and if you know, you can go to the next photo. I think. Julia, um, actually, the, the cover on the application might even be better at showing that. But you can see you've got a big driveway. You've actually got a garage on this one, a drive under garage that is just above where that location arrow is um, off of the, uh, the side street there. So here you can see um, you've got those the kind of turquoise stairs and then the entry, the drive down entry right there. Um, so basically we're going to be uh, relocating that entry a little bit and relocating the one that's in the foreground, uh, installing a roof deck. There's a little bit of impact to a lawn area there. So um, if you can see at the top of the screen, you kind of see in the back corner, there's a concrete patio. So we'll be removing a portion of that and planting it to uh, make up for the vegetation difference. Um, I think we, call for Virginia Rose and Bayberry for that. If we can go to the next slide, you'll see we're in the AO zone. Um, and then the next slide kind of gives you, um, we get existing um, elevations and uh, you know existing and proposed. So you can see the roof deck on the right. Um, you can see you know the entries being slightly reconfigured uh, it's from the outside, it's not really much of a project. You can go to the site plan, Julia. Yeah. And Everett's got his impact table there, but you can see the green areas. Those are the areas we'll be planting. We'll be putting shrubs where that walkway towards Northern Boulevard was. Um, we call for native. I want it, it, it may very well be Virginia Rose, but I'd like to be able to give you the plant list before those goes, go in because we want to think about something that's going to look right next to a, a walkway. Um, we are replacing concrete walk with clamshell walk. So it is overall an improvement. We're removing that concrete, uh, you know, that's part of that concrete tile patio. The uh, The only real other area where, where we're adding the entry is kind of the area where you see off in the P-Stone driveway, we're just coming down with a set of stairs there. So um none of these impact dune function other than perhaps the removal of concrete making a slight improvement um i know we're in the ao zone but we're kind of right on that ae boundary and um it's not an area that we see a lot of flooding in but assuming we get any flooding it is a slight improvement i did also submit with the application um a an existing appraisal and an appraisal of the uh, value after the work's done and uh and we meet that standard um, actually if you, yeah yep um, before we leave the plan the yeah. the right angle greenish area there on the right yes where, where you're going to plant prune bushes yeah any uh, i'm looking towards have something multi-layered like maybe one tree and some bushes and stuff 
So yeah, that, it's it's tough because it's kind of narrow, and we've got the that fence on the neighbor's property right up mm -hmm. against it, um, and then a wood fence right behind there. So well, if I'm you can looking, if you can work it in, yeah. No, I I hear you. What I call for is Virginia rose and bayberry. I'd like to get some bayberry in there. I'm a little worried that might be. I mean, they they get pretty big, um, and the prune is basically we're just pruning some branches that. Um, that kind of come over into that area. We're, but what we're proposing there, it is shrubs, but it's a smaller shrub and a larger shrub. Um, but I certainly were willing to see if we can uh, find a way to fit a tree into there. And I can talk to the client about doing that. Um, okay. <clears throat> you know, probably if we do do it, it's probably a red seed or something that's that doesn't have a lot of um, girth to it. Um, so, okay. so when we go to the um, appraisals, you just the easiest thing on those is you if you look at um, the cover sheet, it's got the value of the. Um, so if you go okay, opinion of value, this makes it so much easier than the first one uh, that we did, where you don't. So you don't have to read through the whole thing unless you want to, but basically, yeah. the existing structure is 195,000 current value of the overall 620,000 value of the lot. And um, when we go to the value of it after the work is done, I think it's a 47% uh, yeah. increase. I, I found that it's, it was, I can't find the page right now that says that, but yes. Right. But if we look at the, I mean, you can kind of do the math. Yeah. If you do the cover sheet of the, um, of the proposed work. Yep. So that current market value as is of 620, is that the house and the land? Yeah, that's the house and the land. That's so if, if somebody were to put this on the market, you would expect it would be 620. Right. Okay. And the contributory value whoops, of the 100. structure was 195. Okay. So what you're and saying is that the land itself is something in the order of four hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. If I had a if I had a buildable vacant lot on Plum Island, right now, I mean, I think, I think four hundred is, you know, it might even be more, for for something like that. People, especially when you get a little further from the ocean, those lots are in more demand now, um, because of things like you just saw from the storm. Uh, you know, lapping water up towards those ocean front ones. So this value of the structure is expected to increase from one hundred ninety-five thousand to two hundred eighty-seven thousand. Right. As you subtract the land. Yeah, and I'm actually going to suggest the next one that we do with uh, Greg's story. I'm going to ask him if he can also then put on his opinion of value, if he can then put the percent part underneath yeah. that on this, it would be really helpful. It would be. Yeah. I well, mean, it we sounds like it's pretty, very close to the, um, the cutoff. Um, yeah, it is. It is, but it, but it meets it. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and Greg has documented his appraisal the way he's done on other cases. And, and I know the first time we used this method that's in the regs, we went through all kinds of review and discussions with the the appraiser and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, you know, the the assessor, and uh, I think it's it's a better method because it actually gets at the actual value of the work as opposed to did you hire a cheap contractor or not. Um, so. But Tom, is there? I'm thinking about the other criteria involved. So yep. there's the 50% increase in value. There's also 25% increase in floor area ratio. It's, I assume you're not increasing it beyond 25%. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe we are. I mean, it's, it's, right. you know, it's all interior. We can, if you wanted to put a condition that we give you that significant improvement checklist, I know I asked those questions and then the one answer that they didn't have a, a, an answer for me on was the the cost part so i had them run this yeah it doesn't look like a significant increase in square footage if, if much at all um but 
I'm also just just to double check. I'm assuming that you're not removing more than fifty percent of the walls and putting on a new roof. Right, right. I mean, we're we're putting on a roof deck, and then the roof deck, um, you know, there's there's that kind of work underneath it there to make it all fit. But that's more like dormer. So the, the roof deck doesn't count in increasing the square footage. Is that correct? Right, right. The roof deck doesn't, but the conversion below it to living space, um, you know, that that's what it looks like. It looks like they're kind of doing a dormer under the roof deck on that side. So that's probably the 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 only real increase in living space. Over here, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, gosh, aren't they converting that underneath garage to living space? I don't know that that they can. Um, yeah, I think they're, I think I think they did. I think I read that in there somewhere. They're converting that. They're converting the garage area. I thought I read that in there somewhere. The garage oh, and, is, and the in the appraisal. Yeah, yeah. I, that I mean, strictly strictly would not be allowed under building because of right. That's a building code thing. I mean, from a from a conservation point of view, it's inside the house. It's really, does the value go up or not? I think, but I think the substantial improvement checklist, I think if if you guys condition that we submit that and, you know, certainly the building inspector should look at whether that's a part of it. I, I'm not aware of them doing that. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking at the cover letter and I'm looking at the property synopsis reflecting and th there's the sentence I think Steve is talking about. Yeah, what is it? The last sentence. Yeah, let me, um, this? Really, I don't know if you want to go to that. Yeah, where where in the narrative, David? Yeah, uh, the cover letter, yeah. The cover letter. In the, in the appraisal, not on, it's not yeah, the, the, mine. the cover letter of the appraisal, okay. Yeah. yeah, see, I don't get a lot of information on these and I don't delve into the architecture that much on these RDAs. Um, yeah, your uh, proposed, let's see, first floor. It's the last sentence of the yeah. property synopsis. Yeah, it says the lower level will be partially gutted and a portion of the garage will be incorporated into below grade space, two rooms total. Yeah, and th it says three. Uh, no, so that's actually the, you, they could not incorporate anything below grade into livable space if it's not already well some yeah. of it is i believe yeah so th that. that's that's Actually, something um not the property synopsis the one reflecting the proposed improvement right no that we're looking at it on the screen right now i see what you're yeah, saying okay. um has this been through zoning review by any chance yet i don't know if it had to go to zoning well, it would have to have gone to zoning. I think it because it, it wasn't increasing height. It well, might. but the roof deck alone would push it to zoning and all right. of this. Okay. Um, so let's just confirm that this yeah. meets zoning. Okay. Yeah, because in the paragraph above, it says it has a full basement with a finished full bath and three rooms that are moderately finished. And then down below, I believe it says they're going to take a portion of the garage and make it below grade space. Yeah. Right. No, I, I see where you're saying that. Um, total below grade finished space at 449. And they say that. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to tell from this what the existing below grade space but yeah i mean i think that's all stuff the building inspector should be looking at not yeah it is absolutely stuff that the building inspector should be looking at but at similar at the same time because it's in the flood zone the commission's right. responsibility is to make sure that it meets fema right. building code so i don't think that commission... well and if they're adding if they're adding living space that isn't accounted for right now they might go over the 50 percent because you're oh, at yeah. 47 now. It would be 20. So the increase in living space threshold is 25%. Let me. The, this, this is kind of really crying out for some table that, that says what the uh, the living space and the areas are. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that could be, if you condition the substantial improvement thing, we can get you all that math. Um, um, I just um, assume, I think, wait till we have it. Okay. I think I think what David and Steve say, said is exactly right, which is we need a table that identifies where there are increases in living space, whether it's right. basement, okay. first floor, second, third floor, um, obviously, roof deck wouldn't be considered actual living space, but we know that. But um, I think that that would help them understand whether or not this is going to meet the FEMA building code standards, in addition to meeting the 25% threshold for not having to go up on pilots. Okay. Yeah, and so I, think the, we'll, I think the building inspector needs to take a look at this, too. Yeah, well, obviously he's got to. It certainly requires a building permit. Um, and what I can do is I can clarify the zoning. I, I'm pretty sure this is the one where I was told that a zoning determination was made that it did not need oh. um, approval, but okay. I could be off. And I can check with Jennifer tomorrow in yeah. the office on that. I wasn't aware that that's been through her yet. Yeah, let me see. Well, it may have been in house. It may not have, may not have actually gone to her yet. Um, yeah, I was just looking to see if if I could easily look in uh, the online portal and see if there's anything there. But we can we can certainly. It sounds like you need that clarified before we can go forward. So I think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll look to continue this to the January meeting and. Uh, What's your first meeting in January? Are you meeting on, on the second? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, so I think what we'll try to do is clean all that up uh, between now and then. And uh, I am in, let me just quickly check if it says there was any kind of zoning. Yeah, no, nothing couple building permits, couple older comp comp things, but no no zoning. Okay. That doesn't mean it that doesn't mean it hasn't gone to Jennifer for a zoning review. But um no understood. Was, but there's yeah. no there's no you know no zoning board decision on it. Right, 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 right. Okay. So we will address this and I'm sure we have plenty of time between now and January second um to right. iron that out. No, okay. That that sounds good. I did not see that. Um, you know, when I when I get those things from the appraiser, I just kind of take a look at the end end point, which is the the monetary part. Yeah, and, I didn't uh, see it either. Yeah, no, it was a good catch, and we'll we'll try to get that all clarified before the next meeting. So with that, I'll ask. Um, unless you guys have any further questions or comments, or there's anybody from the public that you want to hear from, I would ask to continue it to the next meeting. Okay. Anybody else got anything else? We need a motion. Yep. Motion to continue. Second. All right. Roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to open the public hearings? So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, Steve Moore. Yes. David Bryan. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I vote yes. First item on the agenda, City of Newburyport, 388 High Street, notice of intent continued from 1121. So let's see. Um, I have a presentation here from the applicant. Where is it? Sorry. Um, let's see. I moved Tom and Kim and Diane from the city over to panelists. Are they here yet? I'm here. 
Okay, sorry, Kim. I thought that I had actually uploaded the presentation you gave yeah, me. Yeah, I saw it on your scroll bar a right? minute ago, and then it disappeared. I, it's so <laughs> funny. Um, I can bring it up again unless you want I, to I can, it. if you're okay with me sharing screen, I can yeah. do it too. Let me do that. Okay. Let me oh. share. All right. Is that coming up for you all? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Well, thanks everyone for bearing with us. It's been um, quite some time since the last time we presented. Um, we had our site walk with you all back in late August and then um, got a lot of feedback from the public at that time um, and also from the planning board at that time. We have actually not officially gone before the planning board yet, but we are due to do so tomorrow night. Um, they had asked us, we were supposed to go two weeks ago, but they had asked if we could swap to tomorrow night because they had a very full agenda two weeks ago. Um, so we have made uh, quite a few changes since the last time you saw the project based on all the public feedback. Um, and so tonight we would like to um, go over the project in general, but also review specifically the changes that we made. Um, and as Julia mentioned, we have Tom Hughes and Diane Gagnon um, in the audience tonight. Tom will be presenting with me. Diane will be here for questions um, at the end. So just again, very briefly to go over what you already know, um, Lower Atkinson or a common, uh, Lower, Lower Atkinson Common or Pioneer Fields are heavily used park located on Merrimack Street between Plummer and Moulton. Uh, they are the home of the Pioneer League baseball um, teams. Uh, also, the Community Action School, which is on the corner of Merrimack and Plummer, uses the playground at this park um, for there as a resource for them and actually as, uh, as part of their licensing agreement. Um, there are three baseball diamonds, a basketball court, a playground, and a clubhouse, which is used as a snack shack as well as storage for the Pioneer League. Um, and there's limited parking at the park right now, as you can see from this image on the right, uh, parking configuration along Merrimack Street, which is roughly 33 angled parking spaces where cars are forced to back out into Merrimack Street, uh, creates a very unsafe condition um, for cars and pedestrians alike. There's also approximately 22 spaces in a small gravel lot, um, which we'll look at. It's behind the Community Action School. Um, and thank you to the member of the Conservation Commission. I had that inaccurate on my previous uh, application. We had 12 spaces. That was an error. There are actually 22 spaces in that gravel lot. So I've updated that in the narrative and in the uh, plans. So a brief history of the project. This was really spurred by the Parks Commission in 2020. Um, they had a desire to create some improvements at the Lower Atkinson Common. Um, primarily, they were interested in uh, creating a universally accessible playground at the, at the park. The playground equipment here is in pretty rough condition. Um, so right now, as a matter of fact, the new universally accessible playground is being installed. Uh, it's being relocated from the area currently along Merrimack Street to a location that's sort of in the central part of the park. And that, as I said, is being constructed right now, will be finished up in the spring. Um, and at that time, the old playground equipment will be removed. Um, Parks Commission also wanted uh, to alleviate some of the drainage problems at the park. Right now, there's a lot of ponding on some of the baseball diamonds, which makes maintenance a bit of um, a headache. Uh, they also wanted to alleviate the parking issues at the park. Um, Pioneer League has uh, had a desire for, for quite some years to uh, create more parking at the park for their registered players. Um, Parks Commission also wanted to make the park a little bit more accessible, again, through the parking and that accessible playground, but also with, with sidewalks, um, additional bike racks, and shade. Um, this park can get quite hot in the summer months, and so there was a desire to, to bring some canopy trees through the center part of the park as well. There's also a future desire to renovate the baseball, I'm sorry, the basketball court there and make it into a multi-purpose court, but that is not on the table at this time. That's part of a master plan that will be a future um, consideration. 
So a brief overview of the project. Um, again, as you know, the, the big move, the reason we're here before you tonight is because we want to eliminate that angled parking along uh, Merrimack Street. Um, sorry, eliminate the angled parking to the west of the clubhouse altogether um, and continue the sidewalk. I'm actually going to bring up a plan while I talk through this. So uh, if you can see my cursor, we're going to eliminate the parking to the west of the clubhouse um, create a bus drop off there, which I'll talk about in a moment, and then continue the sidewalk from Moulton Street all the way across here. Um, we're going to eliminate the angled parking on Merrimack Street to the east of the clubhouse as well, which is that picture I showed you at the beginning of the presentation, um, and construct an asphalt parking lot with one-way vehicular circulation that's completely internal to the park. So it gets the cars off of Merrimack Street as they park in this location. There'll be 24 spaces in this uh, lot, including four uh, ADA or handicap accessible spaces and queuing for up to seven cars. So as parents pull in, they can drop off their child. Um, and then either park in the lot or continue onto the gravel lot or exit the park altogether. There's also, as I mentioned a moment ago, a bus drop off. Um, there, is an, there is one bus that does come to the park from time to time from the high school, uh, never more than one bus at any given time. So we did uh, include a bus drop off there. No trees will be removed for that uh, bus drop off. Um, then we're uh, intending to expand the gravel lot behind Founders Field. This dotted line, which you can see kind of faintly here, is the existing extents of that gravel lot. So we're more or less doubling that. Um, we have pulled back from the last iteration of the plan that you saw so that we could save a cluster of trees here. We've actually um, reduced the number of parking spaces to uh, 48. We're also planning to improve the drainage. This dotted line here now is a, in, uh, indicative of a swale that will continue all the way through here between Hawks and Pepe fields to improve the drainage and then wrap around here um, so that we are trying to remedy some of those longstanding puddling issues and drainage issues at the park. Um, we're also going to be uh, creating a, a stormwater wetland, which Tom Hughes will talk about in a moment, to also increase the stormwater management at the park. Um, this will be planted with native plantings, um, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail in a moment. So overall, we're increasing the parking from 55 spaces to 72, plus queuing for seven cars and a bus drop off. So that's sort of the big moves of the reason for this plan. And I'm going to turn it over to Tom to speak a little bit about the um, the wetlands. Okay. Uh, good evening. Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental here on behalf of, of the city for, for this project. Um, you may recall uh, the commission issued a determination on this wetland. Uh, it's an isolated wetland that discharges into city stormwater. Um, that determination is now past its appeal period, so I've uploaded that into the record for the NOI um, just to provide something in the record that's official that this is uh, not a Wetland Protection Act wetland. Um, that has some ramifications on the different standards that apply, and obviously it puts it solidly under the ordinance, but it is not, uh, not subject to the state uh, Wetland Protection Act standards. The... Uh, Green outer line that you see there is the extent of the buffer zone, essentially the extent of the conservation jurisdiction in this area. Um, so a lot of the improvements that Kim talked about um, are not within jurisdiction, but they really very much rely on being able to use this area in order to make everything work. Uh, the commission may recall we included a, a variance request within the um, within the NOI application, um, we think there's a clear public benefit to making unsafe parking safe. Um, there's also a public benefit to providing stormwater uh, treatment. Uh, as the commission, I think, is aware, the water that currently falls on the gravel parking space areas kind of kind of just moves off over lawn and kind of makes the edge of the, the ball fields a little bit wet. Um, some of it makes it into that wetland system. 
water flows down through the woods, uh, kind of gathers at the bottom and is, is kind of what forms that wetland system. Water from behind the field flows in there. Um, and I think as we saw in the site visit, water from the hill uh, along the, the uh, sort of gravel road that's there, the gravel path, uh, comes down into that area too, and sometimes at uh, in great volume. So, um, so this wetland is just kind of a hodgepodge of 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 water that that gathers and uh, in in its current form almost resembles a stormwater wetland. Um, if we can go to the next uh, next slide. Okay, so this is the existing conditions plan. I think um, I think we can actually just skip past that one. Okay, so so this this is showing the stormwater wetland. What we propose to do here is basically relocate the wetland, turn it into a formal stormwater wetland. the um, The wetland area, as the commission saw during the site visit is full of invasive understory and full of invasive canopy. There are some red maples in there. There are some um, ash. There are a few other natives, but really the area is dominated by Norway maples. And then all of the invasives in the understory that kind of come along with having an invasive um, canopy. We'll be um, removing a total of 16 trees in the process of constructing the project we will be, and that's in, within jurisdiction, and um, we'll be replacing those with 16. Four that are shown, and Kim's going to go through the landscape plan in a little bit, four that are shown in specific locations, and um, 12 one-inch saplings that we'll be locating uh, during the construction phase, located by uh, the wetland scientists working with the conservation administrator to, to kind of agree on uh, places that make sense. Um, that was something that came after our site visit. It was pretty apparent that once we did the construction work, there were going to be kind of voids opening up where we think we can fit some of these trees in. Um, I'll note that we also adjusted after the site visit our grading. I think we already talked about this earlier at a meeting, but you can see this is an area where we're using uh, some boulders essentially to um, to have the slope work around an existing tree to, to basically prevent us from having to remove that. Um, and what we're doing now is we're capturing all that runoff that currently makes it into the isolated wetland, but we're capturing it in this stormwater wetland. But at the same time, we're also getting um, parking lot runoff. We're running it in through a uh, structure that will be in the... Um, in the parking lot, and then it goes into the existing area. Uh, there'll be a, a structure where that um, existing drain is, kind of at the end of the isolated wetland, and then it will go off into the city's stormwater system. As a result of the project, we're gonna have a lot of um, fruit-bearing native uh, plants within the, uh, the new stormwater wetland. A lot of native trees that will go in uh, will be improving the overall native ecology of the area, which makes it more more resilient. The other thing we'll be doing is bringing real stormwater management and some order to the chaos that's out there right now. Um, I think as you guys have seen, you just get puddles everywhere out there and the water. The water just gets in people's way who using the um, using the fields and it doesn't really uh, have a clear path to flow in a lot of areas. So through the uh, the swale that's being installed and through the uh, stormwater wetland, we really are going to bring some stormwater management to an area where there really isn't any, um, alleviate a, a really, you know, I think a pretty major public safety issue with the existing parking. And, uh, and in terms of, um, you know, the overall ordinance uh, performance standards, you know, while we need a variance to the fact that we're actually relocating a wetland and turning it into a stormwater wetland, um, I think we meet the, the intent of the, of the ordinance by 
providing all of the functions that are currently there in in a higher quality way um, and and doing so in a way that uh, that improves water quality, improves wildlife, and improves those functions and values that are protected by the ordinance. So um, we think this is this is an appropriate uh, variance request made to the commission and and uh, in all other respects, I think it's consistent with the ordinance and its regulations. Um, Kim, I think maybe I turn it back to you when you go through the um, landscape. Sure. Tom, I, I got one question first. Sure. Uh, when we were at, at the site visit, it, um, there was a lot of evidence of water flowing down that road from upper. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. And we, we talked about addressing that. And I'm not, it's not clear to me whether uh, that got addressed. No. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that. One thing I forgot to mention is we have on the plan shown a loc approximate location of alternate four bay. We're still trying to figure out how to manage that water coming down the hill, but we do have an area that we all looked at in the field where the water appears to gather before it kind of makes it way its way over to the current isolated wetland. And we think that a likely part of that solution will be to install essentially a four bay, a place for sediment to settle out and then have the, the water flow into this stormwater wetland system after uh, the sediment sorts itself out. But the city is still kind of looking at that whole runoff situation coming down the road and seeing whether it can be redirected to another location or whether it's going to end up having to come down the hill into this spot. If it does come down into this spot, we'd move forward with something along the lines of that four bay and we come into the commission with um, with an update and a plan showing you know, how we would tie the things together. Do you know when they're going to decide? Um, Kim, I, do you have any more information on sort of the timeline on parks and, and uh, engineering figuring out that water? No, I think the next step for us once we get approval from conservation and planning, if we do, and uh, city council um, you know, allocates the dollars to do this, we're going to have to get a cost, a real cost estimate put together to find out what the overall cost of the project is, and then we will... Um, you know, we'll look have more heavily into the um, the drainage with the city engineer. Okay, because because John Eric is asking for to not have to do a stormwater plan from the planning board, and it would seem like this would be a major part of that. Diane, are you on the call? She's out there. She is with the attendees. Should be moving on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. So that is something that we need to work with DPS on to um, figure out the best way to channel that water. Um, that was not something that we were aware of until we were out there with the CONCOM that it was running off um, in that manner. Um, whether or not we would route it down the hill towards this wetland or kind of reroute it um, to another area on either side of that uh, gravel pathway um, is something that we need to figure out um, with, you know, the director and our, our crews there and what we want to do with that. If you did direct it to the new wetland, what about the sizing and everything else? Uh, well, um, like I said before, we would actually put it into a sediment four bay and then have it go to the wetland itself. Um, and the sizing, um, that would just be more of like a collection area for any of the sediment versus the runoff. Um, this, this system was sized larger than what's out there now. Um, so we don't really have a concern of that not being able to handle the stormwater. Um, and then it would just go, um, as we said before, into the stormwater system as it's doing today. So there will be no change in runoff from that hill to what's out there today. So you're saying that the sizing of it 
accommodates that water. Yep. It's been calculated. Yep, because it's the same runoff from the hill as before. There's no additional runoff from the hill. I wish I'd gone out there today and seen how much sediment got, <laughs> got washed down the hill. <laughs> yeah, I th I think to to you know reinforce what Diane's saying. I think all the water that we're talking about ends up in the the current isolated wetland. That's that's where we saw it was it was t taking the sediment towards. So it, it really isn't an issue of sizing as as much as is controlling that that material. And and we brainstormed a whole bunch of potential thoughts that Diane just alluded to, you know, that we might be able to grab some of that water, run it under the path over to the other side into an area where it could better disperse. There's a, there's a few options. We just don't have all the survey and all the, you know, all the things we would need to figure out how we might, you know, better control that water yet. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to zoom into, again, the area within jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission to talk a little bit more about some of the changes that um, we've made. So as I stated before, um, we've reduced the number of gravel parking spaces from 56 to 48 in this area here. And the reason for that is to save this cluster of trees um, in this location. So the tree removals previously were 22, now they're down to 16. Um, and again, what we're removing and actually what we're saving in this cluster are primarily Norway maples. Um, we extended the drainage swale uh, to between uh, Hawks and Pepe fields um, to try to remedy some of those drainage issues. And we've increased the number of trees that we're going to be proposing for the park. Um, I'll zoom into our stormwater wetland itself. So again, primarily native uh, wetland plants here. We have a combination of low bush blueberry, uh, bulrush and sweet flag, summer sweets and sweet fern, um, as well as some larger um, understory shrubs along the back of the stormwater wetland where the transition of the forest sort of um, uh, ends here, and that is including winterberry and viburnum and summer sweet. Um, and then we also have some blue flag iris and, and cardinal flower in there as well. So I've broken out the plant list to uh, plantings within the buffer zone, and that's this top half here, and then plantings in the remainder of the park. So as I mentioned before, 16 trees we're now proposing to remove instead of 22 and we're proposing 16 trees to be um, planted. So it's a one for one within the buffer zone. Um, there are four larger river birch, which you saw in the overall plan, and then there'll be 12 field located trees, um, as Tom mentioned, and those will be a combination of white oaks and red oaks. Um, I already spoke about the shrubs and perennial mix that we're proposing, um, but just to make note that the the plantings we're proposing in the overall park project is actually a two to one for tree removal. So we're removing um, 18 trees. There's 16 within the buffer zone and then two out closer to Merrimack Street, which are both um, a, a Norway maple and an ash tree that are in sig significant decline. We're proposing um, 36 new trees to be planted within the park as, as a whole. Um, and Tom, did you have anything to add about the the plantings or what the stormwater wetland here? No, just um, it, as you noted, I mean the the species you see in front of you, you've got pollinators, you've got um, uh, plants that have uh, you know berries and food source and uh, and also provide shelter and you know we're getting rid of a bunch of multiflora rose and and uh, honeysuckle and. So I think there's some bittersweet vine out there in addition to the Norway maples. And just about all of those invasive plants that you see in that location have uh, allelopathic tendencies, which means they essentially have their own roundup, nature's roundup that is killing other plants. And uh, that's why you tend to see invasives surrounded by invasives because the only things that can survive in those conditions are the uh, are the other invasive plants. So by getting rid of them, we kind of open up to what uh, Kim's put in this great planting plan, 
but we also open up that area to uh, a, a potential expansion of, of natives. So, you know, the more invasive trees and invasive shrubs we get out of this area long-term, the healthier and, and more vibrant that ecosystem will be. But having said that, you said that some of the trees at the top of the um, parking area were Nori maples, but you were saving them anyway. Were those some of the ones we identified when we were out there as being and looking pretty healthy? So, so uh, you know, I think uh, from the environmental consultant, wetland scientist point of view, my advice would be to remove all the Norway maples on site. But there's a reality of the fact that that the general public um, and the comments that we've heard are generally around trying to save as many trees as we can, which is why we shorten the parking area. And yes, the, those are Norway's that would go. If, if it didn't have to be something that, that everybody agreed with, I would love to get rid of all the Norway's that are out there and replace them all with natives. But I think we still have a great environmental benefit with the project as proposed. And, um, and I think it'll be a little less shock to um, the public on that initial tree removal to have those trees there. Um, I mean, that's my answer, Kim. I don't know if you want to add to that, but I mean, I think there's a reality that we have to get approved by you guys and by uh, planning board. And, uh, and we're generally trying to work as well as we can with the public to incorporate everybody's concerns. So that's all we have for our presentation. If anyone has any other questions, I'm happy to flip back to a pre previous plan or we can stay here and just um, answer any questions you might have. Um, I think if we can go back to the plan that shows some of the trees that are being planted, I think along the, yeah. I think there's some new trees. Yep, there's four river birch here. There's actually five total, but this one is outside of the buffer zone, even though it makes a nice cluster here. Um, so these are the four river birch. And then we have a note here for the 12 field located trees. And those are the six white oaks and six red oaks. I would imagine we'll probably be able to fit some of them in this location here. The open circles are existing trees. We actually had a surveyor go out and locate all of the existing trees in the in this area here. So I think we'd be able to fit some in this location and then probably some down in this location as well. Okay, right where your cursor is, I think, are those new trees below there? Here, the yes. Um, this is the closest to butter. So we did include um, five new arborvitae here at her request to create some buffer. Okay. Again, she's the most impacted by this development. And is there a fence along the, the parking area to protect those trees or? A fence here? Yeah. Um, we're not proposing one. Arborvitaes are fairly um, tolerant trees. I, I'm not necessarily concerned about about them getting damaged. Okay, because I mean, some cars might run into them. But... I do want to note we did not include those in our discussion of one-to-one. -one. Those, right. those, those are yeah. those are an add-on. If you wanted to count them, then we looks like we have one right on the line and maybe no we have two, two to two three. Two solidly in, right, two to three. So okay. I don't tend to think of arborvitaes as trees, quite frankly. I think of them more as <laughs> large shrubs. So, but yes, you're correct. They would be more than a one-to-one -one if we continue if we considered arborvitaes trees. Okay. All right, that's all I had. <clears throat> Anybody else? I, I think they did a nice job of uh, uh, considering our concerns as far as uh, uh, eliminating some of the parking spaces in order to save some trees and extending the wetlands so that uh, um, it, it would be able to save some of the trees. So I, I was pleased to see this plan. Yeah, I, I agree with Tom about the Norway maples. <laughs> I would prefer them not to be there either, but 
we all make our uh, compromises. Well, maybe after a few years, after all the natives that we're planting and are lo looking nice and big, we can remove the Norways and put something else in. Okay. Um, so do we have anything else? before I ask the public. Hearing nothing. Um, Julie, can you uh, let Antoinette read, speak? I've unmuted Antoinette. Actually, Antoinette, you, yeah, there you go. Hi there. Um, I, I do want to add my um, congratulations to everyone that worked on the new plan, because I think that it really reflected a lot of input from a wide variety of sources that I think had some good ideas. Um, first, uh, I would like to note, because we walk our dogs in the lower area all the time during wet weather, that the road that leads from the upper common to the lower common is soaked. It's extremely soaked, even in a much milder rainstorm than we had Monday. So I know that there's a lot of attention on this and the plans for that are still in process, but it is monumental and it should definitely be addressed for everyone, including the Pioneer League, because it's going to be obviously a factor for them as well. Um, secondarily, um, we're the house uh, just next to um, the house where the additional arborvitae are being added, um, our neighbors, um, and it just as a as a note uh because i'm finding it a little bit hard to follow um i see that trees are being re so we're just uh i guess that's technically south of so we're two houses up from the community center i'm just finding it a little hard to figure out it says trees being relocated um right outside our property Field located, sorry, Antoinette. Trees to be field located. So what does that mean, field located? Meaning that we haven't specified exactly where the new trees are going to go. When Once this um, construction begins, we will site where the trees are to go within this area here, but oh, we're not specifying okay. the plan. No, oh. no, no trees are being removed in this location at all. Okay, all right, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, Phil Cooley. Yes, Cooley, sorry. Hey, Phil, you can unmute yourself. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, excellent. So, um, first of all, I think this is a, a fantastic plan. And what I'm most imp oh, and, and by the way, this is Philip Cootie, twenty two Phillips Drive, Newbury Port, Mass. What I what I feel is greatest about this plan is the degree of collaboration between the community, the neighbors, the Pioneer League, and the city, and how all of this came together. It's just uh, fantastic, and I and I think that um, everybody who's contributed to the plan should be really, and I, I imagine you are really proud of it because I'm, I'm, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm almost speechless, especially when we talk about the concern for the trees and the number, the number of reasonable parking spots given up in order to preserve plantings. Uh, because I know that there are so many people who are really concerned about this because it was it's really their garden. And 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 to understand that there are so many youth out there who need open spaces as well. Thousands of Newburyport 
youth, including people who come in from the city, from other cities, to play baseball. And 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 I I just wanted to make a, a quick correction, just just for Kim. Kim, I, as far as I understand, it's not just the Pioneer League that uses this field, but the high school softball mm -hmm. girls as yes. well. They're the ones who need the so, bus. <laughs> yes, yes. So there is there are um, there are quite a few. Uh, communities that are using this uh, field to play ball, including corporations who will rent the field. Um, so just, just kudos, to, kudos to everyone. Um, I, I, I really have uh, uh, nothing more to say than uh, just, just so much appreciation for everybody who's, who's worked so hard to, to listen and to make adjustments. And and I'm I'm really proud of my community right now. All right, thank you. Anybody else from the public? Uh, all right, Jim McCauley's next. Hey, Councillor McCauley, you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me tonight? Yep. Great. I just have a uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I enjoyed uh, the presentation and I uh, too would um, reiterate that uh, the collaboration on this is uh, encouraging uh, to the point where we are right now. I just have two quick questions on this. Uh, one, the um, proposed uh, swale uh, that will split um, the, um, yep, that's it. Will that be underground or that will that be exposed above ground? Um, in its implementation. I'm going to let Diane speak to that, but I don't believe it will be, um, it's not going to be a deep swale, but Diane, are you still on the call? Yep, she's there. Just going to unmute, unmute Diane. All right, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, so the, the swale will be, um, there will be a six inch perforated pipe below the swale. So the whale, swale will capture most of the water and then that pipe will direct it either towards the um, gravel lot, that swale that leads into the um, manhole and then onto the um, the roadway on Merrimack where the entrance to the gravel drive is now. Um, or there is a high point behind, in between the two ball fields. Yep. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the names of the ball fields, but um, that high point will redirect the other end towards um, an existing catch basin, which leads into the city system on the opposite end over on the west side. So okay. this, the whole length of the swale will have a six inch perforated pipe to collect um, the water and uh, direct it to where we need it to go. Okay, so from, um, from that answer, it sounds like it's a little bit of both. There'll be a depression in the ground Correct. to collect the water and underneath that depression will be a six inch pipe? Correct. To be able to do that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I'm assuming th under the walkways and things like that, that'll all be, um, you know, piped under, uh, underneath and, and, and all that. Yep. yep. Okay. And the second question is, have we uh, determined yet what the material is for the um, uh, parking lot um, uh, material? For the paved parking lot? Yes. Um, that will be asphalt. Uh, all of it will be asphalt. Just the just um, adjacent to Merrimack Street, the um, the lot out back will be gravel. Okay, so uh, okay, uh, thank you. Um, I, I I I want to raise a, a flag on that um, in so much that the uh, Head Start School has their um, um, handicap accessible entrance on the back of the building. And they um, they may need some uh, pavement to accommodate their handicap spots uh, going on there. I don't know if that's been part of the conversation or not, but I do know that's one of the reasons why the lot's half paved now and not half paved. Um, you know they they cannot um, they cannot accept uh, um, access uh, in an ADA way over gravel. I'm just uh, raising that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've we've had uh, numerous conversations with the director at the Head Start School, so we're not actually touching what's happening immediately behind their building here. Um, the this line here is the the definition of where the asphalt ends and the gravel begins. 
Um, we are including a handicap space right here for them. Um, but yeah, there is this this location will not be changing. So that that area that you're that you were just circul cir circulating your your cursor on, uh, that will remain um, asphalt for their needs. It we are not changing it. I don't know if they will be removing that parking or not. Meaning we won't, we're not changing, we're not going to be going on to their property to make any adjustments. So if they're, they may still continue to park there. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, I, I think that's the simplistic uh, type of answer is it, it's up to them to do that. I just, I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't, uh, I'm learning now that we're trying to split the property uh, down the middle there. So uh, I understand that. Thank you. I, I have no further questions. Thank you very much for your, for uh, allowing me to speak. All right, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Councillor Wallace. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also just want to thank everybody who's worked on the plan and the different groups that have come together over the years. Um, there was a lot of work that has gone into this. It's not an easy site. Um, the biggest concern is, is the safety for the kids and getting the parking inside of the park, in other words, protected parking lots um, is, is critical. And it, that has always been the goal. And that was always the goal of the master plan. Uh, I'm gonna reiterate what I've said in a previous meeting, but um, the one concern I have still is, is that I, I just cannot support the expansion of the gravel lot um, at this time for a few reasons. Um, one, I see there may be spaces, this has changed quite a bit since the master plan um, where we had more parking out in the front. So I feel like we could still fit some spaces um, here and there to make up for what might go in the back there. Cause I, I noticed like in the existing gravel lot, you said there were 22 spaces, but with this plan within that footprint down, you're down to 15 because you had to put trees in there to account for other spaces. So I, I feel like there's still some areas and out in front um, where the bus drop off is, you know, I know there were some constraints there, but there's a good amount of space right there. You could get extra spots. So that's my one comment. The point being is I think there may still be some alternatives. Um, also, I, I still do not agree that this is an isolated wetland. I know that's already been, um, you know, gone in front of the commission. But I, I can't, um, I don't agree with getting a stormwater waiver. I feel like this is a fairly significant project adding in new spots in the back. Um, and once you alter the drainage patterns out there, you know, we're not going to get it back. And taking out the trees and the vegetative cover, you are going to get additional flow. So without any calculations and not understanding how that flow might impact properties across the street where the flow drains to, I think that's really, really important to look into that. Um, oh, about the, about the roadway runoff. Um, in the past, that roadway runoff went into that wetland. I mean, that was that's where everything on the site was supposed to go. Um, and I know once that road got altered, um, you know, by the parks department a few years ago, then it kind of affected the drainage patterns. So the thing with the existing wetland that's there is that's that's your natural um, detention that you have. And once you take that away, um, again, it could change patterns. Um, the other thing, the, one other thing too, that, that I think I mentioned before is that stormwater is supposed to treat before it goes into a wetland and here it's counting for both. So you're using it's both a wetland and a stormwater treatment. And that's not something you typically see. Um, so that's, those are my thoughts on that. That's nothing new, but also I just want to encourage, I've been saying this to the mayor and to the council that we have to get funding for the safety portion of the street. That is critical to this plan when we did the safety zone and altered the parking. Um, you know, we didn't think it was going to be at least three years out. Um, so just getting some safe crossings, sidewalk, whatever we need so people can get to the park safely. So that could come with the funding um, 
when it goes to the council. But um, I thank you for your time. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, Phil, did you have anything else to say? Gee, yes, again. I just had I just had uh, one more thing to say. Thank you. Uh, okay. I'm shuttling children around, and uh, I I appreciate your patience and allowing me to speak a second time. I want to second the counselor's request for safety considerations and the street. Uh, I'm a parent, and we unload all the time on that street, even with all this parking, folks. We're going to have overflow. We're going to be scrambling to get in there. And, um, and, and, and I, it's, it's great that we got all these spots, but I think that the, um, the idea of uh, looking into safety in the streets and sidewalks is, is an excellent recommendation. Um, secondly, I wanted to, um, you know, I was so, I was so impressed with how the designs changed and how we're coming together on this i i forgot to mention um that i i have a i have a bunch of experience with drainage and the city um uh, through uh the phillips drive uh community and i found john eric to be right like 99 percent of the time and so if he's recommending some kind of drainage study uh that you guys are doing um and I wanted, I wanted to say that it's, we get a listener. Uh, he's saying, hey, I think we need to look at this. You probably should. And that was, yeah, uh, those are the two things that I, I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Uh, Counselor elect Harmon is next. Okay. Let me down. Okay, Mr. Harmon, you can meet yourself. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to echo some of the other feedback from folks and the public uh, on the iteration of this plan, incorporating uh, public comment and the, the concerns of some of the residents, um, the abutters, as well as folks um, concerned about um, the removal of trees. I um, also echo some of the Commission's uh, comments around not 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 wanting to keep some of those Norway maples, but I think it's a it's a good compromise uh, and something that we can look at over time once we see some of the plantings mature. Um, I also want to say I think uh, I wholeheartedly agree. Safety is a is is a primary concern for me. Uh, I think this is a step in the right direction in terms of getting parking off the street, and and I think that in, immediately enhances safety for kids and families and folks using the park, um, but it, the work is not done there, uh, both in terms of the street and monitoring and understanding the effects of that. So uh, I, I think this is a, a, a really positive direction for safety, but it's it's not the end all be all. And then I had a question about, and I, I think this was mentioned, but in the, in the concerns raised around drainage, um, I believe there's additional drainage going in um, around the ball fields themselves as well that will improve, um, you know, how they, uh, receive uh, rainwater. Um, and I was just curious if that's been studied at all in terms of the effects of that um, on the local systems and handling that drainage, in addition to the comments around the, the stormwater running down the hill. But generally, thank you. I think this is a, a an improved plan. I look forward to seeing it move through planning board. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh... Anything else? Anybody else want to talk? Give you a couple of seconds. I see no hands. Uh, all right. What are we doing? Are we looking to continue this to uh, the next meeting till after the planning board? Isn't that what we normally do? I would think so, but. I thought I'd say it out loud. I, I would just say that the only reason to continue until after the planning board is if you have concerns that the planning board might make significant enough changes that it would impact what you've just approved or what you may approve tonight. Um, that's all. Well, that, or, yeah, there, that... or, of course, if there are questions that you have that you want more information on, but it doesn't sound to me like there's that um, there are outstanding questions. 
Yeah, there, there was my concern was whether, you know, planning board is going to step in and, and want a bunch of changes. And I would, uh, I would personally like to get some sort of a, a, a read on that before I voted to, uh, to approve or whatever. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I just note that it looks like we lost Kim. And I was pausing to answer your question because um, I'm here. Oh, okay. I don't see you on the screen. Kim, what's your thought on do you want to close tonight or do you want to uh, keep it open past planning? Uh, that's up to the, the Conservation Commission. I, I doesn't matter to me either way. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and before you vote, just one thing I want to note is, um, is the swale that's shown. Uh, Antoinette had talked about how wet it gets down at the bottom of that uh, that path and the swale part of that purpose is to, to help dry that area out so that should be helping that situation and we recognize there's more water to deal with coming off the hill okay and uh i don't know if i can send you all there was a couple of memos around stormwater um, and traffic that were submitted to the planning board i'm not sure if uh, they got uploaded to conservation as well um, John Eric is actually asking for the waiver from stormwater because in his opinion and looking at projects of this size, he sees no reason that there would be any additional stormwater. What's there right now, I believe, and don't quote me on this, I can get you the documentation. I think it's going from something like a, a 200 square foot wetland to a 4,000 square foot um, wetland. So the capacity is going to be significantly larger. Okay. Yeah, I do believe I did upload that the memo from John Eric. I did not upload the one on traffic. Okay. Um, all right. And the other thing I'll point out, the ordinance requirements on stormwater um, are basically if you trigger Wetland Protection Act, then you have to submit Wetland Protection Act. If you trigger city stormwater, you have to submit city stormwater. So I would, and I would also note that the ordinance has language that would allow you to fill wetlands for the purpose of constructing something to manage stormwater. Um, there is some odd language in there about that, but I don't think it envisioned relocating uh, relocating it. But um, but with and regard, is, yeah, just to just to add to that, Tom, there is an exception in our regulations around um, stormwater what wetlands that were created or functioned for stormwater and making um, changes to those wetlands that are necessary to improve stormwater management without a variance. But in this case, um, I mean, what, what Councillor Wallace was saying, yes, typically you don't use a mitigation wetland for stormwater management as well. But in this, this is a very different kind of a case and in a, it's a very different kind of a wetland. And at the same time, you are actually asking for a variance because of that. Um, so the variance covers the fact that it's not typically something that would be done. And there are a lot of, you know, criteria around that variance that I believe you are meeting. So just to clarify that for everybody, um, Councillor Wallace was correct, but that's why the variance is being requested. Right. Yeah. And we're, we're being conservative in that approach. And I think the, um, whether or not further stormwater study is needed, I think is, in this case, the way the ordinance and the regulations are written is in this case sort of a planning board choice and not a not really as much a conservation one. So from my point of view, if Kim was comfortable with it and if you were comfortable with it, I'd be comfortable with you guys issuing an approval. But Kim is much more in tune with where the planning board may go or not go. Um, but, you know, we feel pretty good about the project that it does everything we've said it will, will improve the ecology and also improve the, the public safety at the park. Yeah, we've had a number of um, meetings with uh, the planning board chair and um, working through some of the um, comments from the public uh, and incorporating their concerns as well as the planning board's concerns into the project. So I'll be curious to see what they say tomorrow night, but um, I'm, I'm confident that they'll they'll look at the project pretty favorably. Well, is there some way that um, if we didn't take action tonight, waiting for the planning board tomorrow, <clears throat> that we could 
and nothing substantially changes that we could um, somehow move things forward without waiting to the next meeting? Is that what your concern is, John, that you feel like we need to get it done no. sooner? No, I mean, it's just, look, we're not starting construction in December, January, right? And and yeah. so it's just another meeting. It's just another meeting if we if we go to January, but it's just a matter of, you know, Kim is Kim is sort of running this for the city. So I just want to defer to her what her thought is. But if you guys, I don't see any harm in it going to the next meeting if you're more comfortable doing that. But, you know, I, I feel like we've spent a lot of time working with folks behind the scenes to really get this plan evolved into the, the place it is. And, you know, would I like to see more Norways come out? Absolutely. But it, are there people involved that would like to see less trees cut? Absolutely. So it, it is a compromised position and it's one that's resulted in a good plan. I would, I would just want to um, suggest that if the commission decides that they feel more comfortable um, waiting until the next meeting to vote on this so that, to allow the planning board to make any potential changes or review that they need to do, then I would just suggest that the commission make it clear tonight for the benefit of the planning board meeting tomorrow that you do or do not have any outstanding questions about this from your perspective, um, just so that it doesn't come up at the planning board hearing as though there may be a question about why you didn't close tonight. Um, you get where I'm going with that? Yeah, actually a statement of support from the commission to the planning board would certainly be welcome. Well, how do you remember that we go, yeah, go ahead, Bill. Oh, I was just gonna suggest if there's no substantial changes, hopefully we don't have to start the presentation from the beginning. Uh, we just talk about the changes. <laughs> oh, what, in, in the next meeting? Yeah. 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 If, yeah. yeah. No, we would, because there's there have been some substantial changes since the last time we met. So, um, but yeah, if, if there's no changes, I'm fine with that. I'm also... It, if folks are comfortable with voting on it tonight, then we can vote on it tonight. Uh, that's, uh, I'm, uh, I'm ready to vote on it tonight. I don't know. I, I think we usually make the point that uh, we like to have it go through the planning board first. I, I don't know if, uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I, I don't feel as comfortable that, without doing that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm, I'm happy with it as it is now, um, but I do want to, I would like to see what happens with the, uh, with the planning board too. And, and since you're not really in a big rush, then yeah, it'll, it, it'll be a quick uh, discussion um on january 2nd if uh if the planning board has no issues well is there some way we can do a vote of support and then then do the final vote after the planning com planning commission planning committee meets well i i, I don't even know if we need a, a vote if nobody's got any real issues at this point then um yeah well, i thought that julia was saying that we should have some well, sort of I, not necessarily a vote, but just um, to make it clear in some sort of statement to make it clear that you don't have any outstanding questions for the applicant that you're waiting for information right. for on January 2nd, that it's merely to allow the planning board to go through their process, but that you're comfortable with it. As is. And that just can be something that you. Yeah. You know, say. And that's, that, that's, that's my position at this point. Um, so, but, you know, just in case. So, Kim, I assume you're going to be at the planning board meeting? Yes. If you could relay to them that we have no outstanding issues. And sure. Yeah. Thank you. We just want to know what they're going to do. Everybody, uh, is anybody not good with that? I'm, I'm going with everybody's good with that. So. Okay. I'll make a motion to continue to January 2nd. Second. Second. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. 
Carol Wagon? Yes. Uh, Dan Warshaw? Yes. Bill Mullen? Yes. And I go, I vote yes. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. See you in a second. Okay. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. Bill Mullen? Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Uh, Stephen, you had something you wanted to talk about? Yeah. <clears throat> for, the, for the national grid thing. Um, so I've, I've been monitoring the, the high tides. <clears throat> and I went down there on last Friday when there was a 9.5 foot high tide, expecting to see the pond or pool completely full. And it wasn't, there was hardly any water from the high tide, which was, I had gone there on a previous high tide of the same height and it was completely full. Hmm. So I wasn't able to go down there on Saturday when there was a 9.4 foot high tide. And I did go on Sunday when there was a 9.3 high tide, expecting to not see any water in the pool. And there was quite a bit of water in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> So then I went down there Monday if, uh, during the high tide, and it was a 9.0 high tide. But of course, we'd had several inches of rain. Um, and the the pool was full right up at the top of the, the pipe going out into the, to the river. And the water in the river was quite high. There's one rock in the seawall there, which I've been looking at, and it was completely covered and on a 9.5 tide, it was not. So there was the rainwater coming down. I think the wind was blowing in and the pool was full. And I went down there this morning on low tide and the pool was completely empty. Um, so I'm not sure that you can predict when that pool is gonna be full and when it isn't going to be, um, but it is full on occasion. And a good portion of it, I think, is salt water. So that's, I thought you could predict, but apparently there's more going on there than I thought. Steve, so. I was going to ask if you were able to um, measure the salinity in any way. Did you? Did you? No, I, I don't have a way of doing that. Did, you, didn't, you didn't try and float in it and see how it felt? Was no. It the top or no. And I wasn't about to taste it. Oh, come on, Steve. <laughs> I, have a salinity, I think I can locate a salinity meter if you want to get really get technical. Get out there. Sure, I, I don't mind doing that. What, what um, about National Grid? I mean, I, I appreciate all that Steve is doing here, but um, it's it's their project. Right. And we're finding uh, issues with it. And uh, I thought the idea was they were going to come back and uh, discuss this with us. So this email, Ray, can you guys see what I just put up on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. This is an email from Teresa Portante at BSC Group. She's been their representative on this project since the very beginning with notice of intent. And, um, you know, I've been feeding her all this information from Steve and from you all for years now about this area. And this was her latest response to me after presenting her with the new information that Steve, um, data that Steve collected on when and when it's not flooded and what we suspect maybe about the pipe. So they're saying that they're gonna coordinate with their engineers on installing the duck, a duckbill valve on the pipe, as well as evaluating the grades of the area to determine adjusting elevation can also So I think that um, it sounds like they're getting their engineers back involved to take a look at it and maybe come to um, a better understanding of what's really going on out there. Yeah, I like the idea of uh adjusting the elevation mm -hmm. which means what fill it so i don't know <laughs> i don't know but you know this so this is the plan this is the planting plan that they provided for us after they filled this whole area in with gravel in the beginning which is not what was what it was supposed to be and so we asked them to revise it they gave us this planting plan and i was looking at this today and um these species, northern bayberry, switchgrass, and beach plum, are all three of them 
somewhat salt tolerant. But um, not but not with water. Salt not spray. completely right. And that, that doesn't mean that they're tolerant to being inundated and sort of swamp. So um, but they did select salt tolerant species. But when when they I mean some of these are like they can handle salt spray, they can handle coastal a coastal environment with some salt influence. But if this is really a situation where they're being flooded with salt water, that's a little different. And it, it wouldn't be all salt, you know, be brackish, but mm -hmm. still. So oh, Julia, that line um, from the edge of the planting that goes out to the water, I assume that's the culvert? Or... That's, the, that's the pipe. And I have another plan that shows that more clearly. So, so everything, uh, every, all those plants that they have there to the left of that, none of them have survived. Yeah. And oh. most of the most of the ones to the right. Right. None of these have survived and like one or two of these. Have. Yeah. 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 Um, it's getting too was... much salt, too much salt yeah. water. That's all. So this is the out, this is their sort of drainage design for the area. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that they're now going back and taking a closer look at this. Look at the design and look at how it's functioning with regard to the elevations in the river, et cetera. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they will respond with some new information for us. Um, the duck bill uh, valve, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not familiar with that term. Uh, so what, I think that just means that water can go out, but it can't come back in. I see. I see. I, I've seen that before. I, so that's what we would call a flapper valve, whatever. Yeah. Is it a flapper valve or is it more complicated than that? It, it, I think it's a little different than a, a flapper valve. You would think would work that way too. I'm, I'm not as familiar with, the, I've heard of this duck bell valve before, but I'm not as familiar with how. I, I, I think we had that on another project, but I can't recall the details of it. And uh, there's nothing here saying that they do have a flap on this, though I'm not sure. I mean, flap valves are pretty effective. It, it, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. So when I was down there yesterday on the high tide, I'm pretty sure that the whole culvert was covered on the riverside, so any fresh water wasn't going to be flowing out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think. But... Yeah. Oh yeah, these duck bills look. Uh, I just looked one on, looked up duck bills, and they they look like a big rubber. Uh, I don't know how you what you, what you call them like, like big rubber uh, valves that just go like this, so they just open up when water comes and then just close back down. Okay, so it's the flow of water that's pushing it open, and then if there's no flow of water, it just closes. Yeah. When are they going to get back to us? Well, she didn't give. <laughs> She yeah, didn't give a time. We'll, there it is, David. <laughs> That's what we got. Said we, got we should ask that. I mean, I will, I she is so word. used to me pestering her at this point. I will get her to give me a date. Okay. I don't imagine it's a high priority with them. But no, it seems like they could care less. <laughs> they care uh, more now. That thank uh, you, Steve for your investigative work, oh. they care a lot more now than they have in the past. I mean, I actually got them to say they're gonna maybe do something different than what they have said before. So. Hopefully they'll shovel their walkway this year too. Mm -hmm. so get snow. Don't get carried away, my goodness. Yeah, it's, we're, it's, we're, just, we're heading off in tangents here. Yeah, it's <laughs> just, I can't help it. it. It bothers me every time I see it with the the that I've I've talked to Jordy about it. Oh, it's really ugly. It, well, yeah. it's all that's all ugly down there. And if they're not doing their job, it's even worse. Yeah. All right. Do we have anything else? Well, 2024. Okay. Yeah. I, make, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. 
All right. Roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yep. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I say yes. All right. Merry Christmas to all. Merry yeah. Christmas. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year. See you all on January 2nd. Thanks. All righty. Hey. Good night. All right.